music for writing music for uh, the Book of Mormon. You wrote music for that. <laughs> that if you had a sense. time machine, your goal would be to go back in time. <laughs> that is exactly. Beat up somebody that made right. a Disney movie, not like take out the world's greatest I have a giver to the world. Should have bought. Should have bought a. Oh. Coming to you. Uh, this hmm. is the Night the Grand podcast number two. Tonight we are going to talk about Steam as general as we can. Yeah. So anyway, I am Ninja Sneakers. I'm Shadow, also the fade. Like. Benthens. Outlaw. T Bone. So we we consist of just a bunch of gamers that decided to do a podcast. Anyway, tonight is our second show. And uh yeah, we we started to talk about Fallout last time and that was pretty fun. And tonight's show is all about Steam. So I know I've I downloaded Steam back when I uh I got what was it? Left for Dead when I first started playing PC games. So how about you guys? Did you did you start off with Steam pretty early or I started using Steam when it was a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> When, I, when we first started using Steam, we were checking out. It just was basically a voice, a voice com, and you could do a couple of simple things with it. It wasn't even a, the platform it is now. It's come a yeah. long way. I think with us, I think we actually did it after we stopped playing America's Army and we started fucking around with Counter Strike. And that's we. Yeah. I think most of us got it. Everyone was like, "You got to download the Steam thing." I was like, "What is that? <laughs> Why do I need this more?" Bone to ever the optimist. Did. I can go for it. I just not sure what it is. <laughs> I had never heard of it. Before. I think I started with Half Life because of the all the mods and everything you could do with it. I think the biggest mod that I really put time into was a uh, Spend Co-op. Hmm. That thing was. Uh, you could spend hours and hours just finding new maps and everything to play with friends. We play a lot of the horror maps because shit was fun. <laughs> yeah. You hit the wrong button, well, you're screwed. <laughs> so, of course, Steam has become kind of this powerhouse of a, a... I don't even know what to call them now. It's a... Company? Corporation? Corporation, yeah. It's, it's kind of... Corporation. It's kind of scary to think about because now, like, m the majority of the games that we play on PC comes from Steam. Like, at least we buy them on Steam normally. So it's rare for a game to be self-published by itself without being Steam Origin, uh, GOG coming up now, all that from our uh, Ubisoft's uh, whatever that is you play. Uh, Ubisoft sorry. Play oh. Origin from um, <laughs> yeah. EA as well. I know there's a few other ones. Without getting us, want a cold chill up your spine. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I'm finally. Get, I'm slowly getting used to Origin because I've been playing Titanfall. But yeah, that's that's basically it. <laughs> and Origin is not bad. I don't have a problem with Origin. I don't know. I think it's just the fact, like transitioning from Steam, which Steam had everything, and then the company's like, I'm gonna remove all my brand new games off of Steam and put it onto my own, which I guess kind of bugged me with that. To a point, yeah, but Origins also brought a lot of nice things to it. I think one of the main reasons Steam has brought out the whole uh, uh, refund aspect is it's actually a prime uh, feature of Origin because you have roughly the same play feature. If you buy something in Origin, you can return it. So, oh, that so that's where the idea came from. Then. I did that. Well, Steam did. had it before. It just wasn't open to everything. Like They're not even asking why you're returning it now. Well, what's in it really open more? They become like, the Walmart of returning things. <laughs> <laughs> two hours. You get it for two hours, and then you can return it. And I think you get 14 days if you haven't played it for over two hours and in, within 14 days. Yep. Right. And no microtransactions. Dear God. I guess that's where the next conversation can come up to with the Steam Summer Sales with GTA V. <laughs> uh, yeah, the sale in general, I've already spent at least $40 on things that I don't even play, like, it's terrible. I, think my wife I just like to know I have them. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, if I ever want to play this, you know, poker game that I never even saw before, like, yeah, I'll have it. Seems like Pokemon now. It's like you gotta have them all. It's pretty much, yeah. Yeah. No. It's only no, 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 I no, 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 no. The game like, was originally five bucks, but now it's ten. <laughs> I hate Pokemon. See how that works. <laughs> so, 
What do you guys think about the refund policy? Is it a good decision, bad decision? Do you think it's gonna hurt the indie game developers or? Well, are, are you really talking gonna... about the simple just return policy, or are we talking about inflating the cost of games before they go on sale? Let's talk about the the refund policy first. Yeah, probably better to stick with the refund policy first. Uh, honestly, I think the refund policy is a great idea, especially with the pure amount of shit that's been on Steam over the past like year. Um, there's been very few really, really good games. It's been a lot of indie development, and while indie development's not a bad thing, eh, I'd rather spend a few dollars and realize that it's a piece of shit than spend a few dollars and just realize that, well, there's a few dollars down the drain, you know? I'd rather spend a few dollars on a piece of shit indie game than $60 on a piece of shit, you know, blockbuster yeah. title. I think it's a good idea. It's Call of Duty. It's a piece of crap. You bought it though. Duty. Fuck for you. <laughs> so I think it's a good idea though, because you know, especially when games first come out, there's a lot of them are so buggy, or they are pushed so fast to get out, and they're so buggy and crappy. And you know, you're you said you're hard on getting a game, you know, sixty, seventy bucks sometimes, and you turn that thing on and you're playing it, you're like, man, this is terrible. Why did I spend that money? You return it, and then maybe later on down the road, when all the stuff, you know, uh, bugs and everything get fixed, you buy it again. <laughs> Battlefield Four. <4. coughs> Uh, wow! You just didn't like Battlefield Four because you got anally raped. Like, <laughs> <laughs> in base, every time I spawned, I was like, "This is stupid. Why am I well, playing one this? map? You played 15 minutes <laughs> one map and died just like, long enough uh, to remind yourself." That's all it you took. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Why am I playing? This is stupid." <laughs> yeah, especially for games that just don't work. You know, there's no reason for a game not to work when they release it. So it gives you an opportunity to say. I don't want this. And if enough companies start seeing that, maybe they'll do something about it. Yeah, see, oh, you know, like actually finishing the game before <laughs> that releases? Holy shit. A, a novel no idea. <laughs> release. Not a single one. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty with you guys there on the refund policy. I, I do think it's a good idea, but I do see the problems with it. Like, for instance, if an indie developer maybe puts out a game for $5 and maybe their game doesn't have, you know, two hours of content, they can, somebody can finish that game and return it, and that's, that's money out for the developers, so. Well, the real, the real danger is people will get into the habit of just going, oh, I don't like this, and return it, instead of really giving a game time. Does it mean some games you have to put the hours in to really so you, full experience? Right. So you're saying basically raise the two-hour cap to maybe four, six hours? Yeah, I usually play, uh, most games I play will actually hit four hours to figure out, do I like this game? Do I not like this game? How many things have I hit that I just can't get used to and I will never get used to? Right. Yeah, but you're, you're entering a dangerous zone there because there's a larger and larger group of AAA games that you can beat in four hours. And especially if you're a hardcore gamer, you can sit there and one just knock That's it out. That's probably why it's only two hours. Yeah. Probably. And there's some indie developers who are complaining about the two hours, be saying you can play most of our game in two hours and then return it. Whether well, it turns out to be people are actually returning that. And I know they're going to look into uh, people who are abusing the system and things like that. I wonder how many people are going to buy a game for a dollar or two dollars on a Steam sale, play for less than two hours and say, I don't want it. I mean, it's two dollars. I'm not going to return a game for two dollars. Wasn't right. it part of the agreement, though, with the whole uh, refunding? If you bought it on sale, you can't refund? Oh, well, either, I mean, either way, even if a game is two dollars new, an indie game, I'm not going to return it if I, if I'm, you know, if, with, if less than two hours. Kind of silly. So speaking of sales, we, we know that the summer sale just started. Um, has anybody picked up anything other than me? <laughs> I've been watching it. Some of the games have caught my eye, but actually, I think my wallet's confused because I haven't bought anything as of yet. <laughs> wallet's kind of like sitting. Your wallet's gonna start picketing soon. Yeah, like, Dude, you gotta spend something on it. So. <laughs> I know. I yeah, picked I got... up. Oh, go ahead. I picked up one game so far, and it's just because I loved it when I had it for Xbox, and uh, I would have had to pay, you know, like twenty bucks or something on Origin to get it. So I picked up Command and Conquer 3, which I know nobody will ever play, but I was like, hey, you know what? I really like that game. So yeah. I don't know if the servers are up for it. Oh, Rogue Legacy. I have a lot of friends telling me I should go for that game. That's a good game. I, I bought that one. Yeah. yeah. It's gotten great reviews. I might pick that up. It's three bucks at the moment. Yeah. And here goes my wallet going like, he's buying things. 
<laughs> so I picked up. Uh, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I picked up uh, Rogue Legacy, like a Poker Night game. Um, Poker Night. Yeah. The the remake of Oddworld. I I did end up buying that. Um, yeah, but a bunch of the games on there are just dirt cheap, and normally they're like twenty bucks or fifteen bucks, and you can get them for like two or three dollars. I'm like, why not? It's it's a wallet, you know, finisher. Now, if like I got on there and I see that the the Witcher franchise is having a you know the franchise sale, so Witcher one and Witcher two are dirt cheap, but Witcher three is only Witcher 10%. three. Yeah, it's like five bucks off or something. Now, if that was like fifteen bucks or twenty bucks off, I probably would have bought it. But I did find a sale. You can get it. For you need to watch for the dollars. end end of Steam, the end of summer when mm-hmm. they do those like final sales. Then you get yeah. Well, it's not just the end of the one, the flash sales, the ones that only last for like a couple hours. Those are the ones you got to watch out for. I did read up on like some Reddit forums and everything. That's your screen was just shaking, confusing me <laughs> on my computer thing. <laughs> but no, that's that's where the big sales will actually hit. But I haven't seen any of the flash sales because I think you have to that game or whatever Steam has the monster thing. That's how. That's how, that's how I guess they hit. I'm not sure. See, I'm I've been disappointed as hell with the sales over Steam for the past like two years almost. <laughs> They're selling a lot for cheap, but it's nothing really like fantastic in my uh, opinion. I and thought. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's like with we were talking about prior to jumping on this, like with Green Man Gaming and some of the other sites out there. You can get these better. You can get better deals every other week through those sites than you can actually on a Steam sale now. You know, I think you said you found like Witcher for twenty seven bucks through I'm guessing Green Man or one of the other sites. So I mean, what's the point of waiting for a Steam sale where you're gonna get ten percent off a good title or I guarantee you next week Green Man Gaming will probably have it on sale for twenty seven bucks and God only knows what else option. So it's just Well, you take that know. risk with anything though. To a point, yeah. But it's like I said, I seem to find better deals on average through Green Man than I have on Steam sales. Well, my thing is most most of us have already decided that we're not going to be pre pre buying games before the release anymore. A lot of us have been disappointed with pre pre release buys, and so I've heard, heard at least heard of most of us say, "I'm not going to be doing that very much anymore." Of course, so I pre order only a few games from companies that I like. It's a physical collector's edition. I'll pre order it. Something mm-hmm. that I actually want and will keep. Yeah. But if it's something like uh, Steam Digital Sales or, or pre-orders or something like that, or a game that I know is not going to be great in the first week, I'll wait. That kind of stuff. I, I don't pre-order as much as I used to. I used to be like, oh, uh, that game looks great. I'm going to pre-order it just because of the bonus content. And the bonus content does absolutely nothing for you. And if the rest it, of the game is shit. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's like, oh, by the way, it's not even a special bonus content. You can buy it as a DLC later. It's like, there's nothing special about it then. Or it's bonus content that is it completely special worth 15 um, minutes into the game. Yeah, it's like Dark Souls. The bonus content for your riddle Dark Souls 2 was like crap that by the time you got through the first walkthrough area, it was literally useless. You had like two other better weapons and the armor was trash. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Or you have to wait until you're level 30 and when you get to level 30, oh, guess what? There's way better shit out yeah, there. Yeah, there's exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's annoying. That's usually the first-person shooter gambit where it's like, we'll let you unlock a weapon early and have the advantage, and it's like something you'll unlock at level three. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like after your first round, you'd have it anyway. So it's a, I mean, it's a challenge, too, when whenever you're gaming with a bunch of friends, like, you know, like we do, too, because, you know, if I see something, I'm like, man, I absolutely want that game, and then I pre-order it, and then nobody else pre-orders it, and I'm stuck playing it by myself. I'm like, man, why did I get this? Shadow Shadow calls the game shit, and then nobody else gets it. <laughs> Why you listen to me? I don't understand. Shadow is lol. <laughs> there was a a developer on Reddit today. It was which was pretty cool. He said he said our game will be even further on sale later on in the week. Um, so this isn't the cheapest. I forget which game it was, but this isn't the cheapest price it's at right now, which I thought was awesome. But he also said that later on. Um, I guess he knows what those sales are going to be. He said there's some pretty epic sales. So we'll maybe see. Rockstar will go cheaper for their Grand Theft Auto Five. No, I'll, I'll get, uh, I don't think that so. It was a game. He said the game, but I, 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 it wasn't a game that I had ever heard of. Um, so it wasn't a game I was likely to buy. 
<laughs> but he rocks it. Rockstar he jumps. There's some serious, serious sales coming up. So I'm Rockstar here. throws in the microtransaction currency. So it's still sixty dollars. And guess what? You can't return the goddamn game. And that, 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 they, didn't they knock it up to like seventy, eighty dollars? They actually dropped the it. Sales. It was eighty-five on sale to sixty or fifty-nine, and then they dropped it to like seventy something on sale for fifty-nine ninety-nine. The regular game is still the regular price, from what I've seen. It's the one bundled with some in-game currency that's which I heard is on better. sale for the same price as a new game. So you get but, a new game with currency. But the currency um, I heard is completely worthless. Like I don't own GTA Five. I've been waiting for Summer Sale to hopefully pick it up. It's still sixty bucks. <laughs> you can you can get uh I mean that same amount of money within you know like two heist or something like that. So I mean or it's all about, yeah oh, yeah you get hacked. So I got hacked ten million dollars the other day. I didn't do anything. So you didn't do anything. I got rid- ridden by the guy for like fifteen minutes. <laughs> so. <laughs> it is bizarre what they're doing in that game. So speaking of the developers or whoever it is, you know, bumping up the prices of games. I know what sale was it that DayZ got bumped up and it ended up being like fifty nine something after the sale or during the sale. It was it was yeah. pretty pretty dumb. Because then they <laughs> then they announce it. And then it was like, hey, we're going to have a 25% off a of Daisy. And then all of a sudden they went from like the uh, beta price or whatever, open beta price to the full game release price of 60 bucks. And it was like, yeah, it's the same price. Yeah. yeah apparently the, the people who gets a Ganjin that does a War Thunder. Gaijin, yeah. Yeah, something like that. They did that last year and this year too, apparently, where huh. they bumped the price and then put it on sale, which is illegal in some countries. So I don't... I don't know who, why they're doing that, but it's a free game to begin with. So I think only thing you're really getting is uh, the packs, like those packs yeah. that you, you can buy planes or whatever tanks right away. <laughs> so do you, I mean, I, I think it's wrong of developers to do that. And in all honesty, it should be illegal here. Oh, it is legal. But... Oh, I, no, it is legal in the U.S. Last I checked. I know in Germany and other places they've been, I guess, cracking down on that, but. It's illegal as it is. Uh, yeah. Steam's not doing anything about it, though. That's the thing. Hmm. See, the thing I was always thought was is that I thought one of the deals Steam had originally was is that they basically allow the developer to mark the price. Usually, when they stick stuff on sale, it's not that they're just arbitrarily sticking it on sale. They have to get the permission of the the, uh, the company. Yeah. yeah. So I don't. While I think it's poor sportsmen or it's not really in the th- spirit of the sale, I don't see why the company has to automatically allow it to go on sale if they don't really want to. So it's, well, they I, want the recognition of it being on sale without it actually being on sale. <laughs> well, and then it's then it's just the old aspect, uh, caveat empitoire, let the buyer beware. If you're stupid enough to realize that last week it was $59 and this week it's $59 on sale, then... <laughs> You get the dunce, you know. I mean, it's your own fault for not being aware. Oh, no, no, no. you get the extra like two million dollar credit card that's like 10 bucks or whatever. You know what? No, when, when I first read on, on Reddit that story on Reddit about them uh, inflating the price, I immediately wondered how many times I've been to the supermarket recently, bought something on sale that I hadn't paid attention to, and they'd raised it like 45 fucking cents. Before All, the time. All the time, you I walk out in a lawsuit right, right now for doing that. It is technically legal, at least in the U.S., and I'm sure it is in other countries as well. How many people actually get caught doing it is a different thing, obviously, but it is illegal. We'll just fudge on a little bit. It'll be all right. Yeah. I, I tell you right now, they do it all the time. I worked almost 10 years in a grocery store. Dude, <laughs> Companies you, will should constantly the, you should do a behind-the-scenes story on, on price gap. <laughs> what, they'll, what they'll generally do is they'll raise the price of the item a week before the sale. So it they're technically not managing their price incorrectly. Yeah, they raise the price, the and then the next week it'll go on sale. Yeah, that's crazy. So we have competitors of Steam that started bringing out their own clients. You know, Origin was one of the earlier ones. Uh, you Ubisoft, Ubisoft, however you want to pronounce it. You uh, play. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, was it Good Old Games is doing it now? Uh, yeah, gaming, something like that. I don't know. Good Old Gaming's GOG. Or Good um, Old Gaming is yeah. Uh, 
And so that was supposed to be the one that's the big challenger to Steam because it's doing the no DRM and all that. Mm-hmm. It just needs to get the backing of more indie titles and triple A's. So GOG has a massive, massive library. It's just that most of the library is old. Mm-hmm. So well, it kind of hurts to a point when it comes to the pretty new age stuff. But most of what they offer is fantastic. I mean, they're all the classic quality games. But uh, it, they're not pretty, you know. They're they're classic. Well, yeah, it's like Neverwinter Night two, mm-hmm. or no, or is it one? I think Neverwinter Night I got on sale for like five bucks, and I got the whole expansion and everything. Mm-hmm. Play that thing with my friend for like a weekend. We put like twenty four hours, both of us in. So, my That's see my. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead didn't you? My favorite part of good old games is you can find. Uh, Cheaper games for like some of the older, more retro stuff, especially, and then you download it through Steam, which I don't know if they're going to be doing that anymore, seeing that they're coming up with this new stuff. But they'll probably do the same thing Origin did, where it'll slowly get instead of actually releasing keys to Steam and letting Steam get a cut, they're going to actually just do it through their own client, right? So, uh I think Steam is too much of a powerhouse to really compete with right now. Like, everybody knows of Steam, not everybody knows of Origin or uh, good old games or whatever else. So, I think uh, Origin and like the Origin and Ubisoft and stuff like that, they're going to fill a niche, niche. They're not really going to expand a lot because they really are only selling their games on the, the actual service. Good old games or GOG or whatever, I can't think. I think they got a great aspect, and the main reason is is that you can't find almost all of those classic games anymore. They you literally you have to find a hard copy of it with the disc, and yeah, that's just not going to happen. And even if you do find it, you can't play it because since most of them can't be played since Windows Seven, won't allow you to go back and use DOS. And I'm fairly sure any other Windows OS that comes out is not going to let you do it either. And that's well, if you have Windows that's Seven thing. Professional, you can. Uh load xp in it at least <laughs> yeah but this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can do a, no. but do it's a server it's, well yeah but the thing that gog's nice is it has the automatic system built into it so it'll automatically load it for you, and you don't have to worry about that crap and for an average gamer who may not like sit there and know windows well enough that's fantastic because you don't have to sit there and try to troubleshoot it you just push a button and you're you're ready to go yeah, you wouldn't want to have to teach people to how to set up a virtual PC just so they could play a DOS based game. <laughs> yes. One of the DOS based games are all these instructions for a DOS game. They have just think about things. trying to explain that to Anti. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> they have those websites now where you can get a lot of those old DOS based games to write mm-hmm. straight, straight through your browser, and it, it works it through your DOS. I don't know how it works, but it goes, it just does it through, through DOS. Um, I played one the other day. I forget what I was playing, but it's, it's pretty sweet. I forget the, the work and trail. They can just yeah, make like a flash easy. emulator and, and do it right through an emulator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forget exactly how they do it. So, yeah, the work on trail was on there. Something, uh, something that Steam is doing that these other companies are not, um, I think a lot of us have already heard about and maybe even looked into is Steam hardware. What do you, what do you guys think about that? What are your thoughts? I had hands-on with the Steam controller when I went to PAX East. I liked it. It was nice. Um, I like new technology, hardware, and all that. Um, it still has its quirks. or just, It's something different from an Xbox controller. It looks similar to one, but it's not one. So right. I think it's one of those people have to get used to it. Mm-hmm. You mean like that disc that you use for your thumb? That touch yeah the touch it's where it's like supposed to in it. well yeah it's supposed to actually emulate um a mouse you can actually i think in the settings change it to mouse tracking mm. so at least that's the original concept um they just had to set up the games and everything so you didn't get to do uh basic um things so but yeah i, I got i got to try it out it's pretty nice I think it's a cool concept and i think it's a, a way to introduce some of the console gamers over into PC gaming without necessarily having to have a complete PC setup anymore. It's like a hub too. You can do all kinds of things with it that you can't do with. Yeah, I know. Uh, what? 
If you're gonna laugh, I was yeah. laughing at something soul root. I wasn't laughing at you, Torrance. <laughs> no, I don't care if you laugh at me. I laugh at you all the time. I like you, even. It doesn't matter yes. what else says about you. <laughs> we all get along here, except Anti. He's an asshole. Well, that's why there's no Anti. With anti. <laughs> So I know, like a lot of my friends that don't have PCs that do console game. Uh, one of their biggest reasons for not having a PC that can do everything is price. Well, everybody that's you know fairly experienced in all of that, you know, PCs or anything like that in general is we know they're not always super expensive, and you can game for a decent amount on a PC, but uh. I think the, the Steam hardware, especially the Steam machines and stuff, are going to bring more console gamers to the PC, kind of which could be, a, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. I guess we'll kind of find out. It depends out. on how you start. If you started on a PC, when, when consoles came out, I was like, okay, and what else does it do? Well, you can surf. Well, not really. You can kind of, <laughs> there's a shitty browser in there. But, but people that grew up on consoles, the Xbox, the... You put them on a PC, they're like, uh, 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 they don't know what to do with it. It's just too much for them. They this thing confuses the fuck out of them. There's like 60 the buttons on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt when playing DZ for the first time. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's just it's Arma, though. You get Arma, it's like most FPSers, it's like six buttons on their left hand. Arma, it's literally the entire keyboard does something. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't I know. See it. I think that another cool thing about it, though, is like, you know, for us that are, you know, PC gaming and stuff like that, if we do get the controller and the the hub or whatever the other piece of hardware is called that lets you do it on your TV or whatever, I mean, how many times have we, I know I've thought of at least a couple times, like, man, I wish I could just sit on my couch and play this game or something instead of sitting in like the, the big screen and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I, that could I be a terrible I don't think I'll ever <laughs> sit on the couch. I'll be sitting on the couch with my wife playing video games. That, that's just not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't well, used the jump button. No, no, not that button. The jump button. I haven't tested it on my um, my actual. So be side yet. seat computing. Yeah. <laughs> the link is nice for people that don't have like a spare computer laying around that they can hook up to a TV. Um, I have my laptop where um my other room that I used to live or my other apartment I used to live at. Um, we actually had, I had it set up that I was lazy. My laptop was next to me. I tried the, sh- the streaming service. It worked. It was flawless. It laggy at times because I was on, like I said, a wireless connection. So you're not going to get the full data transfer over. Um, luckily I didn't play any online games. I should have probably tested that. Um, but you don't need to get the link technically. Like if you have a laptop that is able to run Windows 7 perfectly fine, load up Steam. It's all you really need. If it can transmit the the, the graphics through HDMI or whatever, you're perfectly fine. You're set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, you don't that. have to spend the extra. Like, 49 bucks. is not bad for just a streaming service. It's not bad at all. Right. Like, uh, the place, or Sony, they released the PSTV. Yeah. I Your have it. Has one. Yeah, I have one. Um, it, it's nice because it can also play Vita games, but mm-hmm. at the same time, for ninety nine dollars, that's all it is. It's just a Vita that can be played on a big TV, which not all Vita games are compatible with it. Yeah, but I know my friend, my friend Az absolutely loves that damn thing because it allows him to play his Vita on a big screen TV. Which isn't Vita yeah. like the Zune of handheld games? <laughs> no, it's... no, that was the go. <laughs> yeah, the Vita's go solid, the man. Yeah. But you gotta be. It's it's. You have to be like a JR, JRPG fan. It's a system built for like a particular type of gamer. If you like the Japanese style games, it's where you want to be right now. Especially if you're in the classic like tactical RPG and stuff like that. So. Oh yeah, they got a great lineup coming out in 2015. I'm excited. I'm a huge fan. And if you're a fan of Atlas games, you have to have Vita. So. <laughs> Atlas XC. <XP. laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just. Oh. You know, can't wait. But, He's just released their new one on the Vita. I've been playing that. It's great. Love it. Now, I'm, I'm going to take a anti-Steam box thing. I haven't really looked into it since they released the crap from, like, last year. Mm-hmm. I still don't really like the idea. I think it's 
the price point, I'm not sure what it is or what they're talking about. I know they're talking about different Just, what. You know? They range yeah, from know. like four fifty to thousands of dollars. Yeah. You, could get a, you could get a ridiculous one like you could with any PC. Yeah, and see, the thing is, is that the stats I saw on them didn't really, like, ooh, wow me. Uh, if you know what you're doing or you have a friend who knows what they're doing, you can build a bang in PC for probably less than the price that of the top Steam box, and you got a lot more control over it. Granted, you still have to figure out the OS and all that jazz, but... Uh... You, actually, I would stay away from Steam OS because you got to remember, there's only so many games that is Linux compatible right now, so mm -hmm. you're going to be limited. I would stay with Windows as it is and upgrade to Windows 10 to get all that fancy uh, DirectX 12 one that's actually smoothed out. But because so I, many games are using DirectX 11. <laughs> I don't know, 12 has, 12 has some uh, good stuff in it. I've, I've been four it. versions past DirectX since it started coming out. Yeah. But no, um, at my work actually, we were, in, were cast on making a break room that's a gaming room. We were thinking, oh, we'll just load it up with some PS4s and Xbox Ones. And we came down to the, the problem of everyone's going to want to log in with their account, and that's going to be a problem and a hassle. So I, we brought up the idea together, like, why don't we just build Steam machines? We can build a computer for under 500 bucks, monitors, OS, everything. So we went with the AMD route. We got a one of their high-powered APUs. We threw in uh, one of the R7s. I think it was a 250X. We can run Titanfall on high settings. Mm -hmm. No lag, no latency, anything. And this computer is built under 500 bucks. And we have one of those uh, mini ATX builds, so we can hide it, make it look nice in the room itself. Yeah, and that's the like I said, that's the whole thing with that is, is that if you know what you're doing and you got shit, if you can just look, ask, find forums and ask questions and deal with the Intel and eight, you know, AMD fanboys <laughs> screaming, murder each other after ten minutes of a conversation. But, uh, Most people like the pretty, pretty uh, graphical interface. They have right to do. Well, you can actually with Windows Seven, you can set it up, or not with the steam you can make it that it launches steam in big picture mode right away yeah so you don't have to worry about windows 7 and all that crap at the beginning you just have to type in your your password um you can actually set it up like oh but this game's not on steam it's on origin you add it as a non-steam game it launches it up in big picture mode then so it's you can literally run steam for everything you don't have to deal with windows 7 something breaks, you bring it to a computer shop. I bet Origin's not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any game company is really happy with the fact that you can run it through Steam as a non-Steam game. I don't think they can do anything about it, though, because they're GTA. not really running the game. Yeah. They're just opening the executable. So it's... You, you can't add GTA, even the, the launcher. If you try and add the launcher, it just won't launch. It just won't really? Launch. Yeah. But Some games are like that. It's usually ones that have a self auto patch, or you can't really run it that way because the patcher has to actually start the executable. And Steam will launch. Steam will launch the patcher, but once the patcher is done and you launch the game, Steam doesn't recognize the next jump, so it will immediately cut the connection well, down. Well, Steam Steam gets a hold of it no matter if it's uh if it's just a link to a to a non Steam game or a, if you start up a a non Steam game your other games won't update it knows that you're running a non-steam game even though you're you're just starting mm -hmm. it through steam it won't let you update your other games it won't uh so it knows you gotta, you gotta do the world tanks trick too where you don't load the patch or you load the just a straight game exec and then um it'll work just fine but, All right, the only reason i add to steam is so people know what i'm playing yeah, well, yeah. i mean and that's a huge thing that Steam has going for it, is that everybody uses it to see what their friends are doing. Exactly. It's not even just that. You can, like, it also helps if you launch a non-Steam game through Steam, you can still do the shift tab to be able to chat with them. You mm -hmm. can stream a non-Steam game through Steam. <laughs> so, I, I did not know that. <laughs> yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. So. Yeah, we were doing it with Star Citizen. People. Exactly. Uh, that's a good and another good point. Have you, you guys have all used the broadcasting feature on Steam? And uh, I, I know I was playing Counter Strike the other day, and uh, he's wanted to watch, so I, you know, turned it on, and I ended up having like five viewers that I didn't even know because I was broadcasting to everyone. Like it was pretty. Yeah, everybody's finding it through tags. They're searching for people streaming the games with tags. 
Yep. Oh, so it actually like comes up with some steam for if you want to watch the actual pop up saying like, hey, this guy's streaming right now. Mm -hmm. Can you, you set can the search bandwidth just and like everything else? Yeah, like, yep. Yeah. I don't know if it tracks your, uh, like if you've been looking at the game, it notes that, and then it like, it'll say this person's streaming this game. I don't know if it, it tracks what you do. Can you add like? Back to will. I know this is a weird. But is it like something that was really like you can follow? Like, oh, this guy plays this game a lot and streams it quite often. I'm gonna follow him so it notifies me. Like, hey, Ninja just went up streaming. I don't know if that feature is actually added yet, but knowing Steam, they'll definitely be looking mm -hmm. into. They will be. So, and it's you need, you need to pad in it now. Well, Steam, Steam's just. They're going to keep pushing that level. I, you know, we had somebody asking about, like, um, YouTube releasing the information today, which, like I said, I haven't looked into yet about their game streaming service. So I, I, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if what you're seeing with Steam doing is they're getting into the ring. They're not releasing it right now, but they're openly testing the hardware and seeing how it works and using us as beta testers and knocking all the bugs out. So six months from now, they can launch their own Steam type of service as well, where they can get a streaming service. So, and as you know, joke, Steam uses has every everybody has a Steam account. So <laughs> if they can take that, they got an advantage right off the back. You know, it's just it's you don't even have to worry about downloading like an OBS program or any of the other stuff. You know, <laughs> you're such a dude. <laughs> the hell. Speaking of Steam... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's sending me shit on Steam. <laughs> hey, you're the one that sent me that Board Kings crap thing. <laughs> you know how many times we've wanted to play poker online and it just hasn't been a, anything but a single-player game? Anyways... You guys won't play shit and rubby with me. <laughs> no. No, that's, that's all right. I'm gonna just play rubby. No, I'm, I'll play Rummy, dude. Yeah, shit. As long as we play Russian, Russian roulette afterwards. <laughs> How about we play Russian? Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Anyhow, so um, on to a new Steam subject. Yeah. Uh, is there a new? I don't know. Well, I will say, like I said before, the streaming thing. When I tested it, it was back when it just came out in the beta phase of it all, or alpha phase, if you really want to go that far. Um, I have tested it again. It is nicer, uh, smoother. I was also hard connected, so that's why, most likely. But I definitely say if you want to give it a shot, try it on a laptop before paying 50 bucks. Like if you have a spare computer laying around, launch that up, check it out. Something that's not going to be strong enough to actually play, I don't know, one of the games that you own. <laughs> I just been dog blocked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the heck she's doing. I yeah. think part of the Steam machine is that some games are going to work and some games are not going to work. Well, that's I know they're trying to, that's why they made this weird controllers to try to make it more like you have a mouse in your hand. Because um, you have different controllability when you're using a mouse versus a D pad. Um, but games like RPGs, RPGs. Um, well, you also got to remember like, uh, there's... StarCraft and things like that. You can't oh, do that with, 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 with a controller. No, never going to beat it. Yeah, yeah you're never going to beat a control mouse. But like, there's also some of the games that are controller compatible, but on Steam, they are split. It's a partial control because you need your keyboard and mouse for that like settings and everything. Like, like are you sure you're going to use a controller? Enter. Yes. Yes, I am. But <laughs> I, like, I was playing Final Fantasy 7 and 8. You actually have to click like once or twice with X or something. And then it'll detect like, oh, you have a controller. Okay, let's use that. No, no, I just wanted you to launch in with my controller, so I don't have to use keyboard. I want to sit on my my futon because I'm a poor man and be able to play this crap. <laughs> <laughs> See that? To worry about touching it should keyboard. sense if you don't have a controller, then it should just sense that you want to use your keyboard and your mouse. Yeah. If you have a controller plugged in, you must want to use a controller. You can always have the fun though. Twenty dollar futon. Yeah, see, there you go. Priorities, man. Priorities, That's right. Okay. Yeah, but see, then you got games like uh, freaking Grand Theft Auto, where it's like every time you remotely touch, you're, you're using the keyboard. If you have remotely shake the desk and it senses that controller, it's like switching to keyboard or controller mode. You use the <laughs> controller, and you accidentally move that keyboard or your mouse, it goes switching to mouse control, and it constantly wants to like go nuts on both <laughs> ones. Yeah, I personally use the. I I have a laptop that's a piece of shit, and 
you know, I can stream Grand Theft Auto, I can stream Dark Souls, and I just use my controller to play instead of mouse and keyboard straight to my TV through HDMI and it works perfect. So I might end up getting a Steam controller if they go on sale. I doubt it, but you know. I would say wait for Gen 2. I've talked to a lot of uh, my friends at work and everything and other techies that I know. Um, well, you guys should know, generation one of any hardware is usually mm -hmm. complete crap. Well, the good thing about that, though, too, is, is that it's the hardware will probably awesome. remain the same. It's the software that will actually upgrade it. So if even if you buy a Gen 1, the, the controller will probably still work fine. You just need to wait for the actual hardware or the software fix. Yeah. It's certainly a cool idea. Let it see how it works. Oh, I'm excited. Like, I don't think I'll get the link because I have my laptop that can stream everything. Controller, on the other hand, I am definitely interested in. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same boat with you. I'll probably just wait for a sale of some sort. Generation 3? <laughs> Gen 5. Gen I would 5. Because Gen would... 1 will be for like two bucks. <laughs> I would be absolutely shocked if Steam didn't sell the controller as is. They've been hyping the controller so much over the past like two years since they announced it. If they don't sell it as a standalone, I'd be shocked. Because that's a market they could cut into this. How, many, how much does Xbox make off selling these? for people that want PC games. I mean, every mm -hmm. port that comes out is automatically mapped to an Xbox controller. Yep. So, so, the Xbox controller. For those controllers. How old is that controller, too? Like, Shit, that's 10, 11 years old, something like I that? I wouldn't, without a doubt, man. I think I got it when I got my 360 originally, so you're at least yeah. looking at 10 years. Yeah, and they're still 50 bucks. They're still, yeah, yeah, 50 it's bucks. It's oh. more than one time, too. So, quality. <laughs> 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 Let's test this right now. Go, bro. No. No. This one actually still works, so this one doesn't get thrown. Out, so. will, will this controller stand up to the hangover? This challenge? one's the one I threw. <laughs> so he likes. It. He's like, no, put it down. All right, yeah. throw it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a funny story about broken controllers. After. Oh God! Remind me. Okay. <laughs> Remind me. Okay. Ready? Speaking Ready down on my invisible pen. <laughs> Speaking of stories, here, here's our last Steam subject, and. Uh, Let's see if I can pull this up real quick. Um, so, a lot of you know I'm a Counter Strike player. I play Counter Strike Go. I used to play 1.6. On purpose. He plays it on the own. I, I do. I play it on purpose. Like everyone here. Right. <laughs> Of course, Torn and I can't say anything about it. We're freaking uh, Torn Bone and I. My fault, Bone. I'm forgetting about you up there. But we're we're old school America's Army players, so we have nothing to talk about. You know, America. Um, America. Yeah. America. So yeah, I uh, funny story. Years ago, when I first started PC gaming, it was you know five six years ago, whatever. Uh, my first game was Left 4 Dead. I started playing Left 4 <laughs> five, Dead. Six years. Uh, <laughs> I know it's you. weird. It's weird, right? Um, <laughs> Left 4 Dead. That's it. That was your first. That was my first PC game, other than Counter Strike. So uh. I was <laughs> game before you. Yeah, yeah, totally. I feel old, but we're like the same age. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I played Counter Strike and Left 4 Dead, and uh, those were my first real PC games. Well, I upgraded to Counter Strike Source because it was out, and my friends were like, "Oh, it's cool," and I played that forever. And funny, funny story. I I downloaded some. Uh, some hacks because my friend and I wanted to make some uh, make a PC you know Counter Strike movie <laughs> and uh, are, are you all right down there, Torn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing, I'm, like watching him. Just... Torn's probably thinking on? the same thing I am. It's like, man, he's only been playing PC for six years. Uh, yeah. I haven't played PC games with Torn since 2000. He starts like, like crying. Fire. I remember um, playing fucking WoW in anyway, a first anyway, finish your story. Oh, so anyway, I, I downloaded some... Finish your story. <laughs> I downloaded some hacks, because me and my friend wanted to make a Counter-Strike movie. <laughs> and uh, we we forgot to put on, or turn off VAC in our server. <laughs> so I have a VAC ban from like 2,000 something days ago, or however many days that long ago was. 
And I've been playing Counter-Strike lately, and people, you know, will notice that on my profile, because they look, of course, because I'm so good at Counter-Strike. And uh, they're like, oh, look, this guy, this guy has a, a ban, you know, however many days ago. They're like, how have you not gotten caught yet? And I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? I was caught. So yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my story oh, about. God, because I forgot to turn it off. That's, that's funny. That's my yeah, story about be, being fat. Used to feel pretty good in the old days when you get accused of hacking and. <clears throat> now everybody does that. On a regular fucking basis, guys, man. Mm -hmm. Shit. Yeah. And now it's more everyone's hacking, so you can't. It's like, oh, that guy. Must now hack. everybody literally is hacking. <laughs> I don't know. I think everyone. <laughs> Does anybody buy a game just to play it anymore? You can, you can literally start a stopwatch when you're playing an FPS with Tor to go. All right, three minutes in. Any second now. Man, there's everybody's fucking hacking. This fucking, come on. It's, it's out there. It's I haven't played an FPS with Torn. Torn, we have to play an FPS one time together. This I a generation of of corner cutters. <laughs> you can fucking hack and play a little I bit. I think the biggest issue is hacking has got so freaking stupid now. It's like back in the day, America's Army, you could tell a hacker like 10 seconds into the server because 10 seconds into the match, you'd be headshot. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> you can't shoot somebody happen. from across the map. But, uh... Well, you could. No, don't say that. We, we You couldn't shoot somebody from across the map. 203 horror yourself talking about that crap, really? That's because you're a hacker. <laughs> <laughs> no. I remember, hunting, I remember hunting aimbot hackers back in the day because you always just wall, hat, wall them, man. They would empty themselves trying to kill you and you just turn around and shoot them in the head. <laughs> Thank you, Bone. I needed that. <laughs> hey, outlaw story time. Let's go. All right. So broken controller, right? You want to hear some funny stuff? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so back in my PS2 days, I'd like the band guitar or the the game guitar hero it was like the very first one and i was like man i can play guitar let me play this <laughs> so i'm sitting there playing and i was like what the fuck why am i missing all these notes and so i'm taking this controller like burr, 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 up against the dresser breaking the fucking controller it's going everywhere only plugged in. only to put it back together to do it all over again. And every time I broke it, I put it back together. Took it off the insides, put it back together, just so I can get pissed off again. This is still when we live saying, together, right? Now he works for the company. <laughs> so what you're to saying is uh, to assemble controllers for him. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. You, they'd see that. Say, who says video games don't teach you trade skills? That's right. <laughs> Hey, I learned how to market from playing uh, video games. I'm a merchant in most games. I sell shit. I'm now an IT guy with customer service skills that are unparalleled. I just thought it was funny because it was like, man, you know what? This game is like, f you know, 50 bucks at the time or whatever. The controller was like another 50 bucks. I'm like, Man, I, I get so pissed off. I'm just gonna keep breaking it. So uh, I'm not gonna buy another one ever. So let me just go ahead and keep fixing this. Well, note to self: never let you touch one of my guitars. <laughs> <laughs> like that thing's already broken as it is, but nothing else. <laughs> hey, I don't. I don't. I'm hurt never gonna fight you over to play Rocksmith. Yeah, yeah, right. I need to play Rocksmith. I need to teach myself. That's an actual but... guitar. Yeah, no, yeah, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm amazed at that, man. I've seen you play Rocksmith, and I haven't heard, like, cussing and screaming and then <laughs> sound of, you know, Shit. targeting Whoa. crush. That's yeah. because it's a real guitar. I appreciate my real guitar. I could not care less about a plastic guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing like, performance. Son of a bitch, I hit that note. Through, I heard the static. Until the Cobain DLC patch came out. Here's the thing about Outlaw, though. He played Guitar Hero so much after he started breaking those guitars that he's probably... <laughs> A genius when it comes best. to yeah, he he plays yeah, a lot of the worst one, songs and you're like. While I'm playing a song, like yeah, yeah, I can't fix that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, I'm gonna add this cardboard here so I can get the, the clicker perfect. Like yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. And star power. I probably know how to optimize a Guitar Hero controller now. <laughs> Why don't you pick up somebody's brand new one? This is a piece of shit. Here, let me see this. Let me fix it for How's you. Hasn't been broken and put back together once yet. 
<laughs> no, I think I've beaten most of them on expert eventually. I can see it. The new guitar gear oh. comes out. You're going to pick it up. Look at the new <laughs> controller. The fuck is this shit? Slam on the ground, shatters. There we go. Much better. <laughs> Um, this I can deal with. <laughs> I still got pictures of the death of my last Logitech mouse I, I bought. I what did you do to it? Shoot it? I took it outside and I banged it against the cement with the. <laughs> 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 I I did. Did there you was least... blood coming out of it. I mean. <laughs> did you at least do it to the same music that the Office Space movie? I had. haven't put it to music yet. That would probably be interesting. But it's it's a. Oh man! Be well, what, music. what song was it that? Was like, Logic it tech. feels good to be a game. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Classical music. It was like that. That's awesome. My wife's oh, like, my "Where mom. are you going?" Watching me go by, I, just, <laughs> I think I remember. <laughs> Honestly, I, mean, I, uh, I really do. Never find Logic Tech. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Logic Tech has dice now, mice. You just gotta find the. <laughs> Gotta find the right one. Hey, I got that G five hundred. Gotta man. find one. Fantastic. I I think I had the five hundred. Yeah. My my left click fucked up, and now if you click it once, it clicks five times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you oh, want to yeah. hear something ironic? I have a uh, Razer Tech or a Razer uh, Moba mouse, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's got the, the, the six that. number, the six Pretty number convenient. buttons on the side or whatever, so you can use your you know six whatever. But I still play with the lock screen. <laughs> I still play with the lock screen. The lock screen. Fode the LOL elitist over there. <laughs> I want to I socialize with these people. I, I don't know how to play it without one. I've tried and I'm just like, it's not the same. <laughs> See, <laughs> there's that glitch every once in a while where it forces you to lock screen and I have to turn it off and pop back on because I can't. Yeah. Lock. It, it's terrible. It See, it's such a limited field of view. Did you play like that on StarCraft and stuff too when you were playing? Uh, lock screen on StarCraft? No. I can't do lock screen. It bugs the shit out of me. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm moving the mouse and nothing's happening. Okay, so we've gotten extremely off topic here. Off topic, um, yeah. we, we have about. <laughs> you can play League on Steam. <laughs> you can edit that whole section out and start from the Yeah, yeah, that's you can fine. Just logic kick mice on Steam. So our. Uh, our first podcast is up on YouTube. Um, I will be putting this one up there as well. We have about five, six minutes, give or take, left. Um, did anybody else have some comments about Steam or anything they wanted to share? Steam needs to support AMD much more. AMD fanboy right here. <laughs> I don't think Steam picks favorites, honestly, but yeah. yeah. Aren't they building the entire Steam box at AMD product? No, actually they're not. Uh, last I checked, a lot of the Steam boxes were Intel and NVIDIA based. Really? Yep. That's amazing. I don't know if you can customize for AMD because if you think about it, AMD with, AMD. with their new APU that just came out, the God, Godver or whatever the fuck it's called, it's got some great performance reviews on it so far. So. And that, that's the funny thing is uh, Steam isn't the only one doing Steam machines. It's going to be... Alienware, a bunch of different, power, power yeah, PC. so it's these suppliers that are actually going to do it, so I'm sure they'll put whatever they want to in it. Yeah. Like I said, I'm still torn on that. I mean, it's just... You are not. I'm torn. Okay, you're <laughs> <laughs> I just, I... No, you're wrong. <laughs> It'll be interesting. I'm shadowy. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what happens with it. It's just, it bothers me because they're basically selling computers and it's not a bad thing, but it's, I still have the hatred of, I think gaming has really hit a brick wall when it comes to everything has to be built within the limitations of the consoles and whatever the current generation of consoles is. And while there are some people pushing the limits, <laughs> Star Citizen, um, <laughs> everybody else builds to like whatever the consoles are and it's like while steam ha i like what steam's doing but you're bottlenecking pc gaming at that point aren't you because you're oh, still yes. building within it the the steam machines that are being uh pre-built for steam or valve i should say more uh valve alienware and so on and so forth yes their lower builds are cheap and you think like oh it's not gonna be no they are still powerful enough they still walk over a console any day of the week mm -hmm. um, yeah but you're still building the cut you're still built we're we're a box you know like a pc 
I can oh, upgrade no, no. this. We bad have boy. monsters. <laughs> well, okay. But I can upgrade this bad boy, and well, it would be a bitch now because of the water cooling. But uh, it's still one of those aspects where it's like I, I, I'm not limiting myself. Whoa, and... patent idea. Cool your, P cool your PC on the go with urine. Just <laughs> one now. Everybody. The, that would be the that's that's not the elitist. That's just gamer epic levelness, you know. Look, the box, the desktop box, it's gonna get small. It's gonna get really, really small here in a while. And Steam's basically selling on it right now. Like, hey, we gonna we're gonna go for the gamers and build them small to look like a console, but still have a performance of a mid quality PC. Maybe it's easy buy end. So. But they also got to remember, AMD is also stepping up with their new cards too, with the eight, with Fury. Um, the Fury is half the size from what images show, like actual confirmed leaked images of the Fury uh, liquid cooled. It's of any of their basic cards as of now, because it's using less room and it's also liquid cooled. Um, and That's also half of it right there. Yeah, it pretty much has to be liquid cooled. No, there is gonna be fans. Yes. There's the, gonna be a fan version. The, the Intel one. elitist up there basically oh, going, "Well, it's AMD. No. It has to be liquid cool." No, <laughs> no, no, no. I wish AM. I hope AMD's new chipsets when they come out are competing because it's only good for both companies for them good to be. For, well, I hope you keep with that because Zen is supposed to be the next competitor for server and gaming enthusiasts. It's supposed. I still to be, think Mantle is fucking beautiful. Mantle is actually being moved into their X12's Vulcan. Really? I know that yeah. I, heard, I heard that they were, well, we're getting off really off talk, topic on Steam now. What we're talking about. <laughs> no, I'm not really off topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, My stomach growl just been <laughs> talking <laughs> Technically, if you want to get into like, off topic, this is not off topic because Direct 12 will be moving with Steam because games on Steam need to have it most likely eventually. Yeah, but we're not presenting it that way now, are we? You know what? You go suck a dick. We are now. We are now. Okay, so so on on that right. note, this has been the Nightly Grand Podcast. I'm Ninja Sneakers. Shadow. Oh, me? Yeah, I'm <laughs> the Fade or Shadow or Man of Many Names. Torn Soul. Benthens. Outlaw. T-Bone. Stick around. Next week, we are going to be talking about urine cold computers. We will talk to you then. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow.